one-sided limits. If there are teachers among you who are listening or who are watching this video, I know you studied limits in college. But my target audience for this lecture is senior high school students. So I will talk about limits only on the intuitive level. So what are one-sided limits? Given a function defined by y is equal to f of x, one-sided limit or one-sided limits are concerned with the following. So let's say, for example, this is the graph of our function. Obtaining the value of f of x as x gets closer and closer to a. This value, the value of f of x, can be obtained either by approaching a from the left or approaching a from the right. So you're going to hear that phrase, approaching a, approaching a real number from the left or from the right, often in this topic. We have a shorter math notation for that. It's this. So the way to read this is this. X approaches A from the left, X approaches A from the right. So the, the negative sign there has something to do with your uh, real number line. Okay, so if this is zero, to the left of zero are the negatives, and to the right of zero are the positive. Now you may be wondering, why do we have to... To get close to a, closer and closer to a, to get the value of f of x, when in fact we can just go straight to evaluating f of a. So why do we have to make things complicated? Well, guess what? Sometimes our function has no value at a particular real number. I want you to pay attention to the graph, to this graph. This graph is the graph of this function. f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3. So this is a rational function. And you know that we have a restriction for, for the domain of this function. x here cannot be equal to negative 3. Okay, now, if you were to, to simplify this expression, x squared minus 9 is in fact equal to x plus 3 times x minus 3. And so x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is just 1. And so we are left with this, f of x is equal to x minus 3, but you should not forget this. This is the restriction, x cannot be equal to negative 3. And so that is why we have an open circle here. So our interpretation of a dot, when it is open dot or open circle, our interpretation is it is not part of the graph. And so, we must go back to what you were asking. Why can't we just evaluate the function at A? Why do we have to make things complicated? Why do we have to approach a, a real number from the left or right? When in fact, we can just evaluate the function straight at A. Well, in this example, we cannot directly evaluate our function when x is equal to negative 3. Because this one does not exist. That's why we have an open dot there. That's why that is an open circle. You have no value for the function when x is equal to negative 3. But guess what? Guess what? When we get close to negative 3, okay, and we can get close to negative 3 by approaching negative 3 from the left. When we approach negative 3 from the left, look at that, look at that, okay? Our function approaches that point, and it, it will not exactly end at this point because our x here does not become exactly negative 3. So our graph will never really reach that point. Now, as x approaches negative 3 from the right, our graph goes to the same point. Not exactly that same point, but it gets there. It gets closer and closer. And the value of our function when x is very close to negative 3 is in fact equal to negative 6. So yes, our function has no value when x is negative 3. That is true. But close to negative 3, close to negative 3, our function 
has has some kind of a value. Now we can we can produce or we can obtain the value of a function as x approaches a graphically. Okay, we, we can look at the graph and we can interpret it or we can produce a table of values. So these are the values of x's and these x's are to, to the left of negative 3. Okay, look at that, negative 3.1. This is negative 3. So negative 3.1 is to the left of negative 3. And these are the corresponding values of our function, okay? So these are pairs of real numbers. So these are the coordinates of your point. And if you were to, to plot those points, those points get closer and closer to that point. Now you can approach negative 3 from the right, okay? This is negative 3. Negative 2.9 is to the right of negative 3. And this is the corresponding value of our function. Each of this pair is a set of coordinates for a point. Each of this pair. And so we can plot those points. And those set of points will go. It will, it will uh, go towards that same direction, that same point. And the results are the same. As you get closer to negative 3, the value of your function gets closer and closer to negative 6. This is our function and this is the graph. f of negative 3 does not exist. It has no value when x is negative 3. But, but when we approach negative 3 from both the left and right, our function approaches the same real number. It, it approaches negative 6. So this is how we write it using the limit notation or the limit symbol. Okay? And this is how you read this. The limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left is equal to negative 6. The limit of our function as x approaches negative 3 from the right is also negative 6. That is how we interpret one-sided limits.